Welcome to a complete stitch up. This is the one shot challenge. Recently, we've grown the team here at BidPixel, here at the agency, to get our creative stuff kind of humming along a little bit better. And part of that is Julia behind camera, Brophy sitting off to the side, uh, ganging up on me. So what they've come up with is an idea based off a video that Jesse Driftwood, a Canadian Toronto guy, did recently of a one-shot challenge. The twist is though, we're going to do it with product photography. So the rules are simple. I can only take one shot. I get to take as much time as I want to set the scene. I believe there's three products. I have no idea what they are. I can use props and backdrops and anything that we've got here in the studio, but that's it. Once I've set the scene, one shot. If my depth of field's wrong, if my lighting's wrong, that's it. I screw up, I look bad in front of you guys. All right, I'll just finish off my morning coffee. We'll check out what props they've given me to work with. I guess we're starting with a lemon. This is a total stitcher. Total stitcher. Can I have a break to think about what I want to do? Yes, of course. <laughs> you can. Composite shot with this drink, water shot with Cohen Klein cologne, and a floating shot with some sort of shampoo and conditioner. All right, let's have fun. Oh man, I want to eat that. That smells delish. So one thing you probably don't know, I'm a chef by trade. Uh, when I was an apprentice, I got drummed into me. Remove the freaking seeds out of your lemons. Customers don't want seeds in their drinks or food, but it's the same with product photography. Don't leave the seeds in around the center because it just detracts. And it's one more thing that you have to do in post when you're trying to edit out and make everything look a little bit more polished. So what I've done in the past with lighter things is use this like kitchen scourer and just literally hold it up there. Like the lemon's fine, it's working, but the grapefruit was really top heavy and it just wouldn't stay up like kind of the lemon is, which is kind of frustrating. What I'm thinking now is I'll put these next to each other, cut the lemon one down a bit, and then I'll put another skewer between the grapefruit and the lemon, just so I'll get the grapefruit facing the right way. And I'm just gonna, in post, have to just edit out all this stuff, just so I can then use them how I want them. Usually I could test it, focus, stack it, take multiple photos, but not this time. Nervous right now. I oh, know, I think I've just got to take the photo so you can deal with the consequences. Uh, I took the shot. I took the freaking shot. Uh, let's have a look at it. That's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. That's good, it's in focus, in focus, everything's in focus. Pretty freaking happy right now, hey? Let's uh let's go have a play with that in post and let's see how that turns out. Right, so here's the shot before I did anything. I kind of got the depth of field or perception wrong. The yellow can was turned a little bit. The pink can was turned a little bit. Uh, I would have lined those up better if I was thinking about it. Uh, the grapefruit, I'm gonna have to post edit out where the fishing line cut into it. So the first thing I did was kind of had to deep etch all of the sticks and everything out of it. So here it is, just plain cans. And that really shows the difference and shows how much that yellow can's on the piss and how much I kind of didn't line everything up enough. So then I pulled it all into a composite image and it was, I don't know, I'm not entirely happy with this. This is, it is what it is. I layered the fruit, I put some depth and some shadows, uh, burning shadows in behind the fruit. Uh, and then I added the water droplets into each of the cans and then added some water droplets into the fruit as well. Now, am I happy with this? Not necessarily. Um, is it plausible? Yeah, like if you're gonna use this for an Instagram post, it would definitely be plausible for an Instagram post. But you know, obviously I would have done better if I could take my time and shoot more than one photo. All right, Dave, what are you thinking? Thinking you two are pricks. 
<laughs> to be honest. <laughs> the biggest challenge with this product is that the logos, the name and everything, and you can see if I put it against the light box, it's so much more attractive in the product. I think I'm gonna get Jimmy with his sleeve, uh, holding his arm out like this, and I'll shoot over his shoulder, and then incorporating water. I literally might splash just water down over it. Sweet, that's the shot. Lift it up a bit. All right, pull. I took the shot. Did you? Yeah. Oh, it's probably not as much water as I would have liked, but I reckon I can Photoshop that and make it something. I mean, honestly, I do. High five. Thank you. I can work with that. I honestly might get rid of all of this and just keep the water down the bottom. That's good. I'm happy. One shot, baby, one shot. So for this next shot, I used every product photographer's favorite tool, and it should be your favorite tool at home, the content aware. So what we needed to do was mask out some of that darkness around the edge of the light box, very quickly turned it all to a fairly symmetrical sort of white background. From there, bumped up the contrast, bumped up the brightness a little bit. Uh, we started losing a bit of depth of color in the product. I removed the stem from the product, so higher end photos don't have the stem. And then I started playing with the Kelvin Klein logo. I wasn't entirely happy with how that Kelvin Klein logo was sitting, like kind of cut across at the bottom of the bottle. So what I did was I actually removed it uh, edited the product shot to be without it and then put it back in just a fraction bit higher and it's sometimes those small little changes that make your product photos just that little bit better. So last shoot for the day. This one is going to be floating. So we're going to float these products. One will probably be smack bang there. The next one's going to be floating and there'll be models hands sudsed up like they're coming in to grab the product off the shelf. So yeah, let's see how this one goes. If you can't tie knots, tie lots. almost just reaching in without covering up any of the product name or anything, but just reaching in nicely to pretend that you're grabbing that product. Down like this. I reckon that's the shot there. That's it. I just took the photo. Let's get that into post. All right, so once again, image straight from the camera, obviously a lot of stuff going on in this. So the first thing we need to do is use the content aware tool and make sure that we're just narrowing it down to just a bottle. Uh, I like how we use the model's hand here. It actually has a bit of a play on the product. It makes it you feel more like you're using the product than just on a pink backdrop. And obviously we just need to remove the skewers and some of those water drops. So the first thing we do is crop down to the resolution that we wanted to or the aspect ratio that we want to use on social media. Uh, and then I'm going to start touching up a few things around the photo. So the first thing we did was obviously using the content aware tool, get rid of as much as we can. So there's still a few artifacts that are sort of hanging around that we need to touch up a little bit more, but it's getting fairly close, fairly fast to what I had envisioned. Um, one of the last things that we did was really tidying up, kind of uh, dodging and making it a little bit lighter, a little bit more consistent across the whole photo. But then the problem I had was the product weren't standing out enough. So the final thing we did was add a little bit of contrast back onto the product face. So you can see the logo, uh, you can still see some of the highlights of the lighting, but then you can read the product a little bit better and you can read the logo a little bit better. So always having that product photography outcome in mind for the brand that you're shooting for. All right, so that was the one shot challenge. What a freaking stitch up that was. The girls didn't go easy on me. Like making me do a one shot water shot was really, really, hard. Uh, I kind of took it easy on that one, just pouring water over that cologne bottle. The very first shot, the composite shot, because I had the product spread out in such a wide line, I didn't get the yellow can straight on with the camera. So by the time I tried to pull it into the center of the shot, 
it was sitting on the piss and I couldn't use it as a hero shot. I was so wrapped up in getting the right photo that I forgot to spritz the cans. So although I showed how you can do it in post in Photoshop, it's still not as realistic if it was done in camera the right way the first time. The hanging, floating shot was pretty simple. Probably could have been a little bit more technical in that. But once again, I only had one shot and one chance to get those photos. So have a challenge, do it yourself and see what you come up with. It'll help you think about what you need to do. And while the girls stitched me up totally on this, I think it actually turned out pretty good. And I'm excited to get them back with some revenge next time. Girls? No, they're looking at each other a bit nervously. As always, like, subscribe, share this, comment below. I wanna know what you do differently. I wanna know if you think you're up for the challenge. Thanks guys, see you next video.